and uh, he's, he has enough confidence that he's got enough of a margin that he's going to run in and uh, use that wide entry to get the exit out here. And uh, here we go. Boy, how, uh, how about this, though? Tyler, much, much closer uh, than he has been. We've seen him make a pass. I'm not sure he's close enough. Here he oh, comes. He's going, he's going, he's going for he's it. He's going. Does he get, he got it parked again. Tyler, absolutely a demon on the brakes and makes the pass. Now traffic, McWilliams just going to follow him through that uh, that rider and onto the front straight. One lap to go. Does McWilliams have an answer here? He's close. Mesa with that tighter line. Boy, Jay, whatever problem Josh Hayes had, he figured out how to ride around it. The adaptability of the number four, the veteran. Well, that and these two guys are racing hard with each other, right? Oh, oh Mesa, Mesa goes down. Oh, oh, no. Oh, just get that bike away from him, hopefully. Yeah, that's a big one for Mesa. Oh. That's a big one. Mesa with a hard tumble. Airbags deploy in his suits. You come down this hill, and it's a pretty unique place here. You see you're still on the gas. You crest over the top of the hill, and you got to go to the lever. But if you go to the lever with just a little bit too much brake pressure, Greg, this is what can happen. And I'm so glad to see that bike stayed away from Stefano as it was flipping through the air. And I'm just happy to see him get up. Because really, Jason, this is his first lap. So Sparks coming off yeah. the racetrack. His first laps with his taped up ankle, right ankle, trying to figure wow. it out as though everybody Runs goes wide. wide. Yeah, he got in there a little bit wide. Looks oh. like he's having trouble getting the bike shifted. And you can see Heron had trouble. It drew Bobier out there with him. And Cam Peterson is the big benefactor there. He slots himself into second. You can see Escalante there in fourth. Matthew Skull's taking a shot at him as they come down here into turn 13. So the Westby boys have got that bike running better as he's going to take that spot. Just behind them, Corey Alexander trying to close up on the back of the M4 X-Star Suzuki rider Escalante now. Darren Marshall is his data technician. And when I went in there, he looked at a map and he just goes, I just need a little bit more right there. A little and bit more here, a little bit more there. That huh? was the extent of yeah. it. And so I asked him about it today and Gagne just said, look, that's where we are. Yep. You know, we really are. We barely tweak any of our electronic settings anymore. The, the conversations are clear and concise is it looks like Heron, Heron yeah, made a move on Corey Alexander. So Josh Heron now moves his way up into fifth spot. Then they're going to go up two gears. So this is going to be second gear on most super bikes. Going to do up to third, short shift it to fourth into this wide open right hander at the base of the hill where you kind of G out and come up over the top of a rise. See if the Ducati can do anything with him as they get down into this left hander. See if he has a peak. Here goes Heron up the inside, nice and tight and four position. And just like Jason called it, it's the move. And into fourth place goes the number two of Josh Heron on the Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati. That is the Pentagali V4R. And he's out of it. So it looks like our podium is pretty set. If Xavi Forez can manage these last couple corners. Ever since the Spaniard has arrived in the U.S., he's seen nothing but the checkered flag first. And he notches another victory here at the Ridge. Greg White, you're absolutely right. Xavi has remained undefeated so far this season. And Xavi, a tw oh, near 12-second margin of victory. What are the factors that have allowed you to be so consistent your first season in our series? Well, honestly, I'm feeling so good on this bike. I knew this bike from the past. So I was riding the V2 for, uh, for a while. And uh, I felt so familiar when, when I jumped for the first time on this bike. So uh, it's the first time of this season I, do, I did a good start. I, I arrived uh, first on the first corner, so I tried to, to make my pace. I was working for all the weekend, so it worked out. And uh, super happy with the result. I was, uh, I was trying to stay focused on my pace all the time, the speed, the, the gap with the riders behind, because I want to make sure that I am on the on the level to jump soon on the superbike. So, <laughs> Bobier is continuing to close this gap, Greg. We're going to have three to go when they come by this lap. And look at what Cameron Bobier has done. He has closed this gap down now to probably 0.4 of a second, 0.3 actually, 41.1 for Jake Gagne. Bobier still in the phone. Oh no! Oh, no! And down goes Cameron Bobier, oh. and that started early in that corner. You could see him. Trying to get that bike under control, almost flat tracking into the corner. Too much ask for the Dunlop front tire with that BMW. And Cameron Bobier, who's second in the points by 12, is going to lose a heap of points to Jake Gagne. 
That's going to move Heron back up into a podium oh, spot. We, we got red, a red flag. flag. Red flag out. All right, so he gets into this turn, Greg. He's out on the paint, still squeezing the lever. Look at his two fingers, still on that front brake lever. The bike hasn't come back in line yet. So when it gets back in line, that front tire might just start to fold, and it just goes over those bumps, and you can see that front tire just folds up underneath Cambobia, and the bike's going to go sliding into those hay bales. And, uh, you know, he was up and going again. So I'm not sure if we had another incident somewhere else on the track or if those bales got pushed onto the track. I don't think that they are. So we'll see what's going on here.